hello everyone in this class i am going to discuss the formation of the hybrid model the small signal equivalent model of bipolar junction transistor that means how we can represent bjt by using a small signal models now why this small signal modeling is required okay i know that the main application of bjt is to design amplifier so to analyze one amplifier, okay, that means how much gain I am getting from the output of the amplifier, what will be the input resistance, what will be the output resistance of the amplifier. So to analyze all those parameters, we need one equivalent circuit. Okay. So by using small signal modeling, we can represent BJT okay, by using some linear circuit elements. Okay. Now there are different types of equivalent circuits. One is RE model is there. That is a very simple one. That is basically based upon the diode formation, diode characteristics. Second one is the H model. Okay. And another one model is there that is called hybrid pi model or pi model simply. Now in this class, we are going to discuss the H model of BJT. Okay. And the pi model is basically used for high frequency analysis because the H model is valid for low frequency. And uh, when we are going to formulate the H equivalent circuit of BJT, we are not considering the device capacitance, that is the depletion capacitance, diffusion capacitance, those are present inside the transistor. Okay, So we are not considering the internal parasitic and device capacitances okay? because the H model is valid for low frequency only and at low frequency, the effect of all those capacitance can be neglected because they behave like a simple open circuit at low frequency. But when you are applying a very high frequency signal, okay, the reactance of capacitor, okay, that will be something finite and some finite amount of current will flow through those capacitances and you cannot ignore their role. So that's why the H model is not valid for a low frequency. That's why the H model is not valid for high frequency so you have to go for other model, then you can use the pi model for that. Well, the pi model considers the effect of capacitances also. Now, when you are going to formulate the equivalent circuit, okay. So one thing, okay, you need to follow that the signal you are applying at the input, the, the signal variation should be small enough. Okay, see here it is mentioned. The variation of signal should be small enough with respect to the Q point so that the characteristics of BJT can be represented by the linear circuit elements, such as the register, dependent sources, etc. Okay. As you know that to design one amplifier, the first step is you need to select or you need to fix the Q point. Okay. And you know the desired position of Q point is the mid position of the load line. Okay. And after setting the Q point, you can apply the small signal, that is the AC input you can apply at the input to the amplifier, Okay, and if the variation of the signal with respect to Q point is small, then you can assume okay, that the characteristics of the BZT is a linear one, okay, for that only for the variation, the range, okay, where the signal varies. And you can represent the BZT by using some linear circuit element. But this assumption is not valid for large signal amplifiers, such as the power amplifier, where you are going to multiply, means you are going to amplify Okay. This assumption is not valid where the signal variation is large enough. Suppose in the volt range, okay, few volt range, suppose the output of power amplifier, you are getting a large variation of signal. Then, of course, this assumption is not valid. Okay. Then you cannot assume that the BJT is uh, linear in nature. The characteristics is linear. Of course, it will be nonlinear. Okay. So this is the basic fundamental consideration behind every small signal model. Okay. Now, before starting, that means how we can formulate, how we can establish that uh, small signal model, hybrid model of BJT. Okay. So before that, we need some discussion regarding the two ports network. Okay. So in a small signal model, we are going to represent the transistor by using the two port network. Now, actually, what is two port network? So two port network means it's a four terminal network. So this is the input side, this is the output side, okay. 
So this part, you can say this is the amplifier part. Okay, so basically this can be considered as the black box. Okay, there may be registered component, there may be registered reactive component, whatever, okay, inside this. Okay, so this is basically the black box. Okay, that may be your BJT. Okay, and the input side voltage is V1. This side voltage is V2. And the corresponding current, this one is let I1 and this current lit I2. Okay. So here we are going to replace in the BJT by using a two port network model. Okay. Now, the relation between this voltage and current at input and output side, we can represent by using different network parameters. Okay. So the network parameters are basically, so first one is the jet parameter. It is called the open circuit impedance parameter open circuit impedance parameter, where the V1, V2, that is the voltage, is a function of I1, I2. So J stands for impedance. So it is called open circuit impedance parameter. Okay. Second one is Y parameter. And you know that Y is basically the inverse of J. So Y is admittance parameter okay it is called short circuit admittance parameter so here i1 i2 is a function of p1 p2 third one is the hybrid parameter or h parameter and we are going to discuss this one where v1 i2 is a function of i1 v2 and last one or transmission parameter or T parameter. So those are commonly used parameters for two-port network. So for transmission parameter, okay, P1 I1 is a function of P2 and actually it is minus I2. So those are four different types of parameters that are used to describe this black box. Okay. That means the relation between the input side voltage current and output side voltage current can be represented by using those network parameters. Now, our topic is related to H parameter. Now, why we are going to select H parameter for the small signal modeling of BJT? Why not this Z parameter, Y parameter, or T parameter? That will be discussed later. Okay, so when we'll formulate uh, the final model of BJD from there, you, we can say that due to this reason, we are selecting H parameter, not other parameter. Okay, so you just follow the lecture. So, if we write it in the equation form for H parameter, the equation will be since it is the V1 I2 is a function of I1 V2. So basically, this is P1 equal to H11 I1 plus H12 V2 and I2 equal to H21 I1 plus H22 V2. So this is the relation between the input side voltage and current. So we can represent it by using two equations. So P1 I2. Okay, it is a function of I1 V2. So this function is basically the four H parameters, H11, H12, H21, and H22. Okay, so those are the H equations. Equation one and equation two, those are the equations related to the hybrid model. Now we can easily define the H11, H12, and H21, and H22, okay, from equation one and equation two by applying some conditions. Now what is the condition, see, H11 is basically V1 by I1 if we put V2 equal to zero. So V2 zero means, see the diagram, V2 zero means we can set V2 zero by connecting this point and this point by using a wire, that is by short circuit. Then the V2 will be zero, okay. So H11 that is V1 by I1 when V2 is zero, okay. So V1 by I1, you just say V1 is the input side voltage, I1 is the input side current, so it is basically input impedance. So the definition of in H11 is input impedance when output 
shorted because V2 zero means output port shorted. Similarly, we can define H12. So H12 will be equal to V1 by V2. Condition is I10. So V1 is the input side voltage, V2 is the output side voltage. So input by output, so that is called reverse voltage gain. Because we know that the gain means basically output by input. Since it is input by output, it is called reverse voltage gain. Now mention the condition when I10 means when input open or open circuited. Okay. Similarly, we can define H21. See, H21 will be I2 by I1 when I10. Okay. We can define. Oh, sorry, V2 equal to zero. Yes, I2 by I1 when V2 equal to zero. So see the I2 by I1, I2 is the output current, I1 is the input current. So it is current gain or simply forward current gain when V2 zero means output shorted. Same as this one. And finally, H22. That is equal to I2 by V2 when I1 zero. So I2 is the output current, V2 is the output voltage. So it is output admittance. When input open, when input open, it's output admittance when input is open. So those are the definition of H parameters. Okay. So H11, that is the input impedance when output open, H12, that is reverse voltage gain, H21, that is forward current gain, and H22, that is called output admittance. Okay. So you can easily identify the unit. That is the voltage by current, so it will be ohm. H12 is the ratio of two voltage, so it is unitless. H21, it is the ratio of two current, so it is unitless. And H22, I by V, so it is basically the Ohm inverse. Okay. So this is all about the definition of all four H parameters. So now let us see what will be the model, what will be the equivalent circuit, H equivalent circuit of this two port network, because uh, we need to establish, we need to form one equivalent circuit, and that circuit will be used for the BZT. And after that, we can use that circuit to analyze the transistor amplifier parameters. Okay, now let us see. So H equivalent circuits. Okay. Yeah. H equivalent circuits. Now just see the equation. One second, I'm writing the equation here. So V1 equal to H11I1 plus H12V2. I2 equal to H21I1 plus H22V2. Okay. Now see here, V1 equal to H11I1 plus H12V2. So clearly the H11 is a resistance. We already defined the term. H11 is a resistance. Okay. It's actually this impedance. Okay. So we can represent it in this way. Okay, so here I am taking in form of resistance. Actually, it will be impedance. Suppose you are working with a circuit where both inductive or means resistive and reactive components are there. So it's better to draw it in form of impedance. Okay. Then see the voltage basically. It's better to draw one common line. So this is V1. Okay, so the current is I1. So V1 is equal to this voltage drop, H11 I1, plus another one voltage drop is there, H1 to V2. So H1 to V2 is basically a dependent voltage source. See, H1 to V2, because H1 is unitless. Okay, so here we have one dependent voltage source, H1 to V2. Okay. 
And if you have a doubt, if you just verify it, you can apply KV and here at the input side. So this voltage V1 is equal to this IR drop H11 I1 plus this voltage H1 to V2. So it basically satisfy this one. So the equation one is basically the equivalent circuit is this. Now similarly coming to the output side, out I2. So this is the current, output current I2. So that is basically having two part. This is first part, this is second part. So I2 equal to H21 I1. So clearly it is a dependent current source. H21 I1 and H22 V2 is admittance. Okay, let's say H22 is admittance. So uh, since uh, we are using this symbol, means here h11 we consider is a impedance the uh, resistive part so when you are representing admittance mention one by h2 this one because h22 is admittance parameter so impedance will be inverse of that now you can verify it if you apply kcl at this point see i2 divided into two parts the first part is this one h21 i1 and second part is this so the v2 is the output voltage here okay so see the second part. So the current flowing to this, it will be voltage divided by resistance. So V2 divided by one by H22. Okay. So I2 is the summation of this part plus this part. So it basically satisfies the second equation of H model. So this is the H equivalent circuit. Okay, so the circuit we are getting here, this circuit. So this is the H equivalent circuit of the two four network. That means inside this black box, Okay, so we can say now we can replace the black box by using this equivalent circuit. Okay. Now, when we define the different H parameters, see one thing, H11. So it is the input voltage by input current. It is input impedance. Okay. So since it is related to input side, okay, so it is also defined by HI. I stands for input. Okay. H12, it is reverse voltage gain. So it is also defined by H R. H21, it is the forward current gain. So we can mention it as H F, F stands for forward. And H22, that is the output admittance. So H O. So we have four H parameters, H11, H12, H21, H22, or we can also mention in this way, H I, H R, H F, and H O. Similarly, in this diagram, so instead of writing H11, so you can write it as HI. Instead of writing H12, you can write HR. For H21, you can write HF. And for H22, you can write HO. Okay, so both are same. So this is the formation of H equivalent circuit of two port network. Then coming to the BJT. Okay. So why we adopt the age model for BJT, why not other two networks such as Z parameter, Y parameter, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Now there are few reasons. Some points are, first of all, the low frequency, the Y parameter, uh, the age parameters are real. Okay, but low frequency, since we are not considering any capacity part, even if you calculate the age parameter of BJT, okay, so it will be a real number. And H parameter can be easily extracted from BJT characteristics. That means if you plot the input and output characteristics, you can perform the experiment in the lab and you can plot the input output characteristics and from there graphically you can calculate what will be the H parameter. Then those H parameter can be used for transistor amplifier analysis. And also some manufacturer, they also specify the values of H parameter in the transistor data sheet. Okay. And regarding the selection, okay, so those are one point. Regarding the selection, so if you ask that why we are not going for a Z parameter, okay, or Y parameter, see, so you are already familiar with the transistor equations. So we know that the transistor current equation, that collector current IC equal to beta IB plus some function beta plus one ICO. Okay. So actually this 
equation we are getting, so that is only for the active region, and the ICO is the leakage current or reverse saturation current. So actually, this ICO is a function of okay the output side voltage means uh, if we are considering the common emitter configuration it is a function of vce okay so basically ico is uh, an equation form it will be a function of okay it's proportional to e to the power minus of vce by vt like that okay so you can search the textbook for that Okay, so ICO is not constant. It is a function of a temperature and also it is a function of the voltage you are applying at the output side. Okay. Similarly, when you are talking about the input side characteristics of BJT, let for common emitter configuration. For common emitter configuration, if we plot the input characteristics curve, so the graph is in between VV, IV, and for a different value of VC at VC1, VC2. So this is the input characteristics. Okay. Now, since BJT is a current control device, so BJT is not a voltage control device. So BJT is a current control device. That means the output current is controlled by input current. So here, basically IB is the input parameter. Although while plotting the graph, we are plotting the voltage along x axis, but actually the IB is the input parameter. Okay, the base current is the input parameter here. So IB, okay, here. So this is the input parameter here. Okay. And from this equation, you can see IC, that is output parameter. Okay. And See here, IC, that is ICO, leakage current is a function of VCE. So VCE is an input parameter, okay? And since IB is an input parameter, this value VBE is an output parameter, okay? And you can check, see for a constant IB, so if we draw a constant line, so for different value of VCE, your VBE value varies. We already define IB is input parameter, VCE is input parameter. So for a constant IB, if you vary the value of VCE, see VB value changes. From the input characteristics, you can decide that. Okay. So of course, VB is output parameter. Okay. So this is for common emitter more than the same thing is true for any other. Okay. So here we can summarize this. So for this common emitter mode, so if we write this C mode, okay. so here, output parameter that is VBE and IC is a function of IB that is input and VCE. So output is a function of input. Okay. So VBE IC is a function of IB and VCE. So this is the situation for common emitter mode. Similarly, if you go for any other mode, if you see the input and output characteristics, it will satisfy the same. So in general way, so we can write for a transistor for BJT, V1, I2 is a function of I1, V2. Now for common emitter mode, so V1, okay, you can see for common emitter mode, okay, so it's a base emitter, collector so for common emitter mode so v1 is nothing but the base emitter voltage okay vbe and so this is the voltage and current notation okay so v1 for c mode you can check v1 that is nothing but vbe i2 that is collector current and I1 that is base current and V2 that is nothing but VCE. Okay. So this condition is exactly the same as the condition which we discussed okay, previously. Check this one. So V1 I2 is a function of I1 V2. 
So that's why we are going for the H model, not for any other models. That is, we are not going for the Z parameter model, Y parameter model, or T parameter model. That's why we select the H parameter model. Okay. And remember, this is valid only for the low frequency. Okay. So for high frequency, this relation, whatever the equation we are establishing here, we are getting here, that might not be valid. And then whatever the input output relation we are mentioning here, this might not be fully valid. Then might be other model we have to use. Okay. So if we finally establish the model in the same way, whatever the model we have here, Okay, so for BJT, so the model will be like this. So if we draw the equivalent circuit for BJT, so first it will come HI, then the dependent source, HIV2, HFI1, so this is IB, yeah, for common emitter mode, because this one is widely used mode for BJT, HRV2, HFIB, and one by HO. So output side current will be collector current IC. This voltage will be VCE, so here it is VC because the emitter is common. IB is the base current and VB is the input voltage. Okay. So VB emitter common, so VB is the input voltage. And since we are working with the common emitter mode, so you can add HIE, HRE, HFE, and HOE. So HI for common emitter mode, it will be HIE. Similarly, other H parameter, you can add one extra E. Similarly, if you are working with common base mode, it will be HIB, HRB, HFB, and HOB. And for common collector mode, similarly, the values will change. So this is the common emitter mode equivalent circuit for a BJT. So when you are going to analyze a transistor amplifier, which is working in a common emitter configuration, so you can use this as a equivalent circuit for BJT and you can calculate what will be the voltage gain, current gain, etc. So that thing we will discuss in our next class. Thank you.